Hello and welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul and my co-host Justin Baker and I are ready to rank the Atlantic Division and the Pacific Division uh, heading into the 2019-2020 season. Uh, I think these divisions offer up some very interesting discussion. They could go a lot of ways. Maybe not so much the Atlantic, but we'll see. We'll see where we where we fall. Uh, I'm really curious to see your Pacific because I've seen, you know, I, when I do this, I like to go around and I like to just see what other people think just because it kind of gives me an idea of what people are thinking and uh, it maybe gives me, you know, I like to read the previews and of course you get people who are writing just about their team and so it kind of gives me an insight into that. And uh, I, my Pacific division, I switched it around like three different times. I kept looking at it and was like, no, nah, I'm not feeling good about that. I'm going to switch this. I, oh, this guy's going to make this team. Uh, you know, I just I went with my gut on some of this, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling confident. You okay. know, some years you rank teams and you're like, this is like I, I looked at USA Today. Their rankings were the same as last year's standings. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> how is this? You literally just rank them based off of the standings from last year. Like I got some stupid intern to come in and do it and be like, "Hey, will you just take care of this real quick?" No, it was like this is our scientific algorithm we, we use to An predict algorithm. this. It's like, what do you mean? Everybody is the same. It was like, although the the one difference was the sharks and the flames were flipped, so the sharks won the division instead of the flames. What the flip? And then it it went Tampa, Boston, Toronto, Montreal, Florida, Buffalo. Detroit, Ottawa. It was like the exact Atlantic division from last year. It was like that won't happen. That the chances of that happening are so slim. Uh, I there there are some things though when I go I I try to look for trends. Like okay, you know, does everyone have the same last place team? Why? Like I'll say most people had the Los Angeles Kings last place in the Pacific Division, and so you know I like to go on. I like to figure out why that is and why do why does no one think that they have a shot to even finish seventh in the division so uh anyways cool. there's our our little uh little rant to start the show yes a little <laughs> rant yeah don't if you're gonna do some rankings or predictions don't don't use last year's standings and just <laughs> use your brain that's dumb okay uh let's start off with what do we want atlantic or, or pacific dude you you pick well we're gonna start with the atlantic division because that's who I have first on my list. Beautiful. Uh, we'll invert this, and we'll start with number eight. And I'll just start with my number eight. And I am actually picking Steve Eiserman's Detroit Red Wings to finish last in this division, and I'll tell you why. You really? Look, you look surprised. that I, I I'm there. shocked that you didn't put Ottawa. No. So uh, shocked. I, I, actually, I think the Ottawa uh, Ottawa is going to be a little bit better than last year. I, this, is, this is what I'm thinking. So when Steve Eiserman took over the Tampa Bay Lightning, he had no problem letting himself fall down the standings for a minute, for a minute. Which is true, yes. And so I think if he's smart, I mean, there's a reason why the guys he went out and acquired in the offseason aren't good. He did that on purpose. He's creating opportunities for his younger players to get some reps. Dylan Larkin will lead this team the best that he can, but it is in the Red Wings' best interest to finish at the bottom. And I think that Iserman will do his best to help this team finish down near the bottom of the standings. I don't think it pays off to have them finish sixth, seventh or sixth in this division. If they can get a top five pick, that's what they want. While I don't disagree with you that finishing at the bottom is ideal for this team's future, um, I just don't think with... So, okay... Number eight, I have Ottawa. Number seven, I have Detroit, which I'm assuming you probably have them flipped, right? Yes. So you have, okay. My reasoning is when you look at that top line, right, what they did those last, you know, that last month of the season with with Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Mantha, right? I, they're going to be a dynamic line, I think, for this team this year. Mantha's already, he's got five points already through the preseason, which means diddly squat, but he is showing a little bit of promise, right? Glad you know that. Yeah, thank it you. Nothing. It really does mean nothing. But... He looked very, very good for Team Canada this past, you know, this past spring. Um, so that top line is going to produce. I do think all three of these guys are going to be easy fifty-point guys. I think Bertuzzi maybe might be the guy that might hit forty-ish points, um, but I do think Mantha is sounds gonna, like a last place team's first line to me. However, I do think Mantha is a thirty-goal scorer. I think Dylan Larkin's a thirty-goal scorer. I think those two guys are going to be dynamic. 
and lead this team in offense with you know maybe 60 70 ish points respectively um, if he can stay healthy if they can stay healthy and you look at I, I kind of looked at Boston in the past, right? I don't think Detroit obviously has the defense or goaltending Boston did. However, they were able to lead offensively with just one dynamic line. And I do think while it's not going to generate the same type of success. You're talking about guys that you think are going to end up with like 50 or 60 points. Boston had guys that were like 80 points, all of them. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, but again, I, I think having one dynamic line for the wings anyways will draw some success that Ottawa won't have, right? They'll have Thomas Shabbat on the back end. I think goaltending for Ottawa is going to be horrendous, whereas Detroit will get some decent goaltending because, let's face it, Jimmy Howard is still a capable guy when he's healthy. So I think that that combination, and then the only caveat for this team would be come trade deadline time because they do have a lot of assets. They can flip out Mike Green. They can trade away. Um, you know, they might dump off a lot of players, um, you know, to get some picks back. And I again, I think Eisenman won't be scared to do so because he wants this team to finish towards the bottom. And um, I, I do think they're going to end up in seventh place. But just because, again, I think they have a little bit more offensive guys that can put up some points. I think Hiroshi, I honestly don't know how to pronounce his name yet. Um, <laughs> he's going to be great for this team up front. I think he'll, you know, Anthony Siu is still going to be a 30 goal guy probably again. I do think there's going to be some some scorers on this team in the second and third line where maybe they didn't really have so much before. So, you know, where Ottawa's lacking goal scoring and guys that can produce up front, I think Detroit, that gives them the nod to finish seventh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think... I just think that Detroit is going to try to be bad. So that's it would be ideal for him, but you know, yeah. Um, I also think Ottawa has a a significantly better back end, despite like yes, Zaitsev isn't great, but he's better than uh, most of the guys that the Red Wings have on their back end. Sure, Uh, Ron Hainsey's proven that he can play with somebody who uh, maybe can move the puck himself. He's responsible, unlike Mm -hmm. half the Detroit Red Wings defensemen. Yes. Yes. So I mean, I think that they have they have a chance, and Craig Anderson, you know, he may be due for a good season now. Well, you did talk about we yeah. we have talked about it it's constantly. His roller coaster, the yeah. The good season, the bad season. So, and, I mean, most of that just comes down to the fact that the team in front of him wasn't good. So, what are you going to do? Uh, but I, I also Craig Anderson contract year. He's probably like thirty eight years old from though. from here on out. He's getting one year deals. So, but if he wants to play in the league again and not go have to take a million dollar contract somewhere, he needs to have a darn good year. Sure. Like he needs to win some games for Ottawa where people go, oh wow, like we're noticing this, and maybe they acquire him at the deadline. But that's that's something I think that Craig Anderson, I mean, there's there's some incentive there. Sure, and you can make the same argument for Howard too. He's in a contract year. What are the Wings doing in, in net? You know, they've got Philip Larson who's fourth on their depth chart. That maybe is the next young guy, but you know, he's a couple years away. So you know, maybe Howard's got to go out and say, hey, you know, I'm still your guy. So we'll see. All right. Um, okay, so we, we've got, I mean, essentially Seven and the eight, same yes. thing there. Uh, who's your number six? The Montreal Canadiens. Oh, you have them falling a little I bit. I do have them falling a little bit, yes. I do think, um, despite last year where they did have a lot of success, and most of the success, too, people forget, they came out of the gates firing, right? They were yep. they were hot early they were on. in the playoffs. Them yeah. and Buffalo were both in the playoffs. Right, Buffalo was leading Buffalo the league at one point. Yep. Um, I, I think this team, though, they had a lot of guys that had career years, you know? Uh, Thomas Tatar... Max Domi. Um, right. Um, you know, now the, the book's out on, on what's-his-face, uh, Koke Niemi. You know, a lot of guys are now like, okay, this kid's not a rookie anymore. How is he going to follow up his sophomore season? I think he does kind of have that Dylan Larkin slump where maybe he falls back down to do a 30, 40-ish point season, um, being a top-line guy there. You know, he's, you know, he. I don't think he, well, he is. He only had, uh, well, he had 34 points last okay, year. Okay, so, yeah, I, I don't think he, you know, I mean, he's not going to do worse than that. No, probably. but I don't think he does much better, right? And I think uh, you also have Jonathan Drouin, who right now is, you know, the, I don't want to say the subject of some trade rumors, but his name's been tossed around out there. And for me, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? He always is. He, but it's also Montreal. Like, everyone's on the trading block. Sure, but he's he's looked horrendous preseason training camp so far. He hasn't looked great. And I think this team is, you know, expected him to be that number one line guy. And it's just, it's, I don't think he's, he's up for it. And, um, you know, I, I think too. Again, this defense is just not very good. Um, they really could have. I mean, Shea Weber is 
I mean, when Shea he Weber, Shea Weber. From, yeah, I mean, he can play 30 minutes a night, and that's probably what they're going to have to do if they're going to do anything. Absolutely. That's assuming he stays healthy, for and, sure. And Carey Price is probably going to have to be at about a 9-2-3 nine, clip. Right, which is going to be hard to, to keep up for a team that doesn't have a lot of good defensemen in front of him, right? Carl Osner going on waivers again, so he's going back down. So, um, you know, you look at the guys in front of him again, Mike Riley, uh, Ben Sherratt, you know, I, these aren't guys to me that are going to be you know, top tier guys that are going to, you know, protect the net. And so, you know, again, outside of Shea Weber, I don't think there's much in front of him that gives me a lot of confidence that, you know, Carey Price is going to be able to not have to be the savior every night for this team. Okay. So, uh, despite all this, I have, I have Montreal at five. Okay. But I have the Buffalo Sabres at six. Well, well I have the Sabres at five. I, I do like what the Sabres did in the off season. Uh, you know, I, I, th- I think that, getting Colin Miller on their back end. That was a nice move. And uh, adding Marcus Johansson as a third line center. That's, you know, all things that I, that I can appreciate that they were able to do. And, and I mean, it's, it's also not lost to me that Brandon Montour was acquired late last season at the trade deadline. And so he, him getting a full season under his belt with the Bruins, I'll definitely be positive. I just Carter Hutton. I mean, he had one really good year and that was, that was kind of it. And uh, so goaltending is always a question. I mean, there, there's just the defense to me is still pretty, pretty bad. We'll see how good Rasmus Dahlin can be here. Like, you know, is he a guy who can really shore up everything? Because he's, I mean, he, we, we know he's going to be really good. He definitely has shown some flashes of brilliance uh, in his rookie season. Uh, but it's a difficult position to play. And so... I just don't think that they have the horses there. And offensively, I still, yeah, they bring in Jimmy VC. You know, you bring in Marcus Johansson, but Marcus Johansson isn't going to go out and score you 20 goals. Not a chance. I mean, what, what, did, what did he have last year? He had 12 goals last year, 13 goals, because he put five the year before that. I mean, it's been a couple of years since he scored 24 with Washington, and he just doesn't seem like that guy anymore. I think he's lost, lost a step. And so to me, the Buffalo Sabres just, uh, they're going to toil a little bit again. They may go on some hot streaks because they do have some streaky guys. But I just, again, I think we're going to be looking back in this year and go, I feel so bad for Jack Eichel. What is it about (laughs) Jack Eichel and Connor McDavid being on these teams? (laughs) Yeah. Um, listen, I, I won't disagree with you. I think there there are some some holes in this team for sure. Um, I do think though the additions of Jimmy VC, Marcus Johansson, I do think this gives the team a little bit more flexibility in terms of their depth forwards. Right. I mean, obviously they're going to rely heavily on Skinner, Eichel, and Reinhardt on that top line to go out and produce. But I think now instead of having to wonder if maybe do I move Reinhardt down. You know, do we have to rely solely on Casey Middlestat to produce on our on our second line? Now you have some guys that maybe can can protect and add a little little scoring on the side. And plus, let's not forget two guys like Connor Sheary and VC are all in contract years, so they they have something to prove, right? VC's been looked at his time in Buff or his time in New York as mostly like a bust because he's ended up being on a third fourth line minutes there. So this is a guy that's going to want to go out and prove that he can still play and earn that next big contract and by big maybe you know four or five million dollars who knows um but yeah and then you you look at the back end too and uh, yeah i i think there's a lot of guys on this this squad that maybe like you know a bogosian a wrist and that maybe are are starting to fall off a little Scandella bit and a little bit yeah but i i like the addition of colin miller i think that's going to add a lot of stability back there for this team uh Darlene, i think only gets better and then you know, I think with those two guys and, and a Marco Scandella staying healthy for the season, I think that gives them enough stability on the back end where a guy like Carter Hutton maybe can, you know, rebound a little bit. Now, why I don't think he's going to ever get back to that St. Louis 930 no. save percentage form, you know, he might still be in the 19s and be good enough to give this team a chance to win. Yeah, I don't think that the Sabres are going to be really bad. No. I think they'll be a like they'll be a playoff bubble type of team. Same with Montreal. Uh, they'll be there until, you know, maybe like late March. So yeah. Now, where I think, off. you know, Montreal has a lot of guys that'll probably regress in my mind. I think Buffalo has more opportunity for guys to improve, whereas okay. they won't regress. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, Casey Middlestat can't get worse. So True. <laughs> there's that. Uh, they, they've really, the Sabres have really missed. Like, if you think, I mean, Sam Reinhart, granted, the guy who went after him was uh, uh, Sam. 
Oh gosh, he's in uh, in Calgary. Went third overall, right? The guy after him, the guy who couldn't do a pull up. Oh my gosh, what's his name? It's okay. I can't think of third overall. All good. So I mean, first first overall that that particular year. Uh, outside of that, it's kind of fallen off. But uh, Sam Reinhart at number two. I mean, that just you can't miss with the second overall pick and. For all intents and purposes, they missed. Like, yeah, that's nice that he's turned out to be an okay top six forward. But sixty-five point guys, not bad though. It's not what you're looking for with the second overall pick. I don't. think. No, no, for sure. Especially I mean, at this point, like he's he's twenty three. This will be his fifth year. Like, I mean, you need you're expecting big things out of him. Otherwise, I think you're declaring him to be at least a partial bust. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I mean, if you look at you can compare the draft. You know, a couple years ago with Dallas, right, getting the number two, and they went after Heiskanen, and that's. That looks really good. So I think, yeah, maybe if you're Sam Bennett, Sam Bennett, that's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, another, I think if you're going bust, if you're going apples to apples, right? Yeah, of course. And you can like compare number two pick. Sure, you'd rather have a Heisken and then a, a Reinhardt at this point, but right, yeah, absolutely. At sixty five points, not a total bust. It's right. It's not a bust in the sense that like he, the guy isn't in the NHL, but at two overall, you're really. I think you're thinking, all right, this guy's going to change our franchise, and he just. He's been nothing more than a nice top six forward. I'd rather have Reinhardt than Nolan Patrick right now. That's, That's so. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. Um, and you know, Patrick Laine, even though he's had some great seasons, is kind of. Yeah, he's teetering on that. Yeah. Could he end up being one of those two? Yeah. Um, oh okay. So uh, was my, uh, Buffalo's your number five? Buffalo's so five. We just kind of yeah. flipped. Uh, so who is your number four? The Panthers. Okay. And okay. I honestly, I thought about putting Boston at number four here instead. Um, just to spoil it, they're at my number three. But I think these two teams are going to finish within just a couple points of each other. Yeah. I really do. I think the addition of Joe Quinville is going to change much more about this team than the addition of Bobrovsky, mm. personally. Okay. Uh, adding some structure and discipline there for this team is going to be key. Um, and then another big thing, too, I think, with this team is a healthy trocheck throughout the entire year mm. is going to yep. be... Yep, that can't be discounted at all. <laughs> that guy is probably... Could be the best number two center in the, the league, maybe outside of Malkin. Or John Tavares, if you want to go that far, but I do actually. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say <laughs> you'd rather have Trocheck. No, over I'm Tavares. kidding. Absolutely yeah. not. But but yeah, he's Trocheck's up there in that conversation. He's a very good number two center. Absolutely, and and as far as goal scoring number two centers go, yeah, he's definitely like top five goal scoring number two centers. Uh, I actually have Boston at four, do and you? I have okay. the Panthers at three. So I have. Uh, I have the Toronto Maple Leafs playing the Florida Panthers in the first round. I don't hate it, and I wanted to do it so badly. I wanted to put them in number three. And, you know, the reason I did, uh, partially because I just want it to be different. Like, I feel like it's been <laughs> okay. uh, also, You're sick of seeing also, Toronto I, get bounced. I just, <laughs> my thought, when I look at Boston, I see a team, like, we're all wondering, can they do this again? Like, their core is older. Right, their guys, yeah, Marchand, when is Bergeron. This, I mean, Marchand, I'm not so worried about. Bergeron can, I mean, he's not going to stay healthy all year long. I he hasn't like that. the last three years. No. He's been and, like 60 games. I mean, Chara's slowing down every year. Every year the guy gets slower. So he's not going to get any better. Uh, I, I think that there's a few guys that may regress. And I mean, he, David Backus is like, He's going to be watching from the the press box. I think he almost really, every game. That's I mean I think that he if ten he, games at most I think he gets in. Mm. Yeah. So the Boston Bruins to me regress a little bit. I wouldn't want to play them come playoff time. I just think regular season wise, I don't think like what they win. They won like what they went on some crazy stretch like a twenty game stretch where they won like 15, sixteen or seventeen games, didn't they? Last year, they went on some mad stretch at the end. So I think that definitely, you know, that definitely boosted them. And I don't think that's going to happen again this year. I think the Panthers are probably going to hit some, maybe hit their stride really early, and uh, and and kind of boost their way up. I just there's always teams that come out of, you know, they were non playoff teams and they come out and they not not only make the playoffs but they also squeak into the tops of the division so it's hard to stay up there all the time and i i think that the bruins are the one team out of the three from last year that you go all right who's most likely to regress well it's probably the bruins yeah i would absolutely agree with and that to ask i mean how much like we'll see how long he can continue to be productive well i will say luckily for boston they do have a fantastic backup 
you know, with Halak back there, I think it's true. But also Halak, old as dirt. He, he's not really he's, old. As he's dirt. quite he's yeah. quite old. Yes, We're I like will give you that. Yeah. Speaking of Florida, though, the one thing I do love that this team did go out and do was add a lot of depth at the forward position. Um, that's one thing they missed a ton of last year. And adding guys like Noel Achari, who again leaving Boston coming, was coming huge. From Boston, yeah. Was huge for that that fourth line last year in Boston was huge. So losing a guy like that's going to be a big pickup for Florida. Uh, Brett Connolly, a forty five point guy coming, and he's going to serve well on that third line for this team. And um, again, I think it's just just big on this team staying healthy, right? And you got Dandenoff coming into a contract year, so is he going to play his lights out? That I mean, let's face it, Barkoff, and I'm sick of hearing it at this point. Mo- might be the most underrated guy in the in the NHL. Like unless you know, if Florida was a, a perennial playoff team like Tampa, he wouldn't be underrated. Right. But you know, it is what it is. I think he's he's due for you know just a ninety point season here, and uh, you know some selkie considerations. So again, like he always does every year. So like always, yeah. Um, yeah, and, it'll and be they, a great. They do year. have some guys who maybe could potentially make the team this this year coming out of camp. You know, yeah, Owen like, Tippett. What's he going to do? Owen Tippett, and and there's like Henrik Borgstrom and uh, Alexei Hepanyemi. There, there's some some good players coming up through their system, and so maybe they don't make the team right out of camp, but an opportunity as the season goes along. Uh, I think there's some there's some high level talented guys down Florida system that maybe could peak their head as the year goes along. Yes, would agree. Uh, okay, so you're number one and two. I think we're the same here. Uh, number two, I've got Toronto. Number one, I've got Tampa Bay. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> I tried to put Tam- Toronto at one, and I I thought so. Tampa Bay added a better backup goalie, maybe the best backup goalie in the NHL. Quite possibly, yes. Absolutely. Curtis McElhaney has been incredible the last two or three years. Uh, they also add Patrick Maroon, and you know, I mean, Patrick Maroon isn't necessarily a guy who's going to put up huge numbers for you in the regular season. He'll come to play playoffs, though. Come playoff oh time, gosh. which obviously there's there's something going on where this team needs a little bit of. He'll be that guy that won't let this team get swept first round if it even gets close to that again. Um, and not to mention, Kevin Shattenkirk joins the team. Yeah, not a bad who, guy to put I mean, on your third line. Yeah, your your third defensive pairing. Instead of Dan Girardi, you get Kevin Shattenkirk. Right, and now you got a guy who can quarterback a second power play unit. Yeah. And you don't have to split at McDonough or Hedman if you want to. You can play both those guys now. And you've got a guy who has something to prove. Like, he was disappointed. You know, he was bought out by the Rangers. Right. And, and he's on a one-year contract, so right. he's got to prove it if he wants to get another big deal. And I mean, you also have Mikhail Sergachev, who is a restricted free agent at the end of the year. Obviously, he'll be looking to get paid. Yeah, like, rumor is he's he's going to be playing top-line minutes with Hedman, too. So, yeah, so like, that's going to work out real well for him. I mean, you're gonna, I mean, good luck paying him less than Hedman. Right. It's, well, unless you're, you know, I mean, they're lucky enough to get Braden Point on this. Yeah, they worked some magic with this, this cap, so. They did. Um, good, good on them for being able to offer the sun and no taxes. No taxes always helps. Uh, apparently, I've read that the equivalent of uh, Point's contract, if he was in Toronto, would be like 8.075 or yeah. something like that. And so, I mean, it's not like a ridiculous difference, but yeah, it is, it is, I mean, a million bucks. It helps when you're trying to keep a team like this together. Right. I mean, right. let's face it. Um yeah, but to Toronto, though, I do like uh, a lot of things with this team this year. Uh, the back end, especially for me, is is pretty exciting in terms of just what, like, I don't know what to expect. I, I think this could either be a huge success on the on the D-line or it could be a huge bust because you have a lot of guys that are on one-year deals. They're uh, looking I mean, to prove. I, I think that, I mean, Tyson Berry, you're basically bringing in a guy who is this guy's number, gonna put up a 60 number points. one defenseman. You have two guys who, who have the potential to put up 60 points. Absolutely. And then, you, I mean, Jake Muzzin is, you know what you're getting out of him. All Rock the time. solid D. And I think Cody Cece has something to prove here. And Cody Cece is playing with Morgan Riley, and he looks good. I, and I, there's quite a few people that have been talking about, you know, maybe Cody Cece's problems were more a result of, like, they were Systematic. trying to take a square, a square and stick it into a, a circular peg. Like, it just, uh, you know... Maybe Cody CC coming into the right system and playing with the right guys is, is going to help turn him around. We'll see. I mean, in reality, they swapped Zaitsev for CC. So, you know, if uh, if it doesn't really work out, it's okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, we're just glad to get rid of Zaitsev. But, uh, I, yeah, I mean, this defense, we'll see what happens. I mean, unfortunately, Babcock did uh, did 
say that he really likes Martin Marincin and like he lost all this weight and oh, he stop looks it. great. Stop I'm it. like, no, don't play him 20 minutes a night, please. So I, you know, a guy like Ben Harper, they brought in, he, to me, he's, he's a big body. He'll probably play 45 games and, uh, and they'll use him against teams when they feel like they, they need some more muscle, but, ultimately just don't see it i i really like the leafs top top four but if there's an injury that's where i think there's it's going to be a little worrisome although they do have rasmus sandin they do have timothy lilligren who a lilligren for sure i think is going to go and play again in the in, for the marlies but yeah. uh, sandin has a shot to make the team and he potentially could move into the top four as the year goes along if need be uh, but if not and he's playing as their in their bottom pairing. I mean, that's, that's a good bottom pairing rookie, rookie bottom pairing to have. So I think they're, they'll be in pretty good shape. And I think we're due to see the Leafs win their first playoff series since 2004. Let's hope so. That's a long ass. Time. Although I will say though, Florida is not going to, I mean, assuming that your prediction's right, right. They play Florida. That's not going to be an easy out for sure. I mean, getting past Florida is going to be a little tough. I think Quinville will sweep them. Oh boy. Quinville got swept last time he was in the playoffs. That's that's a different <laughs> different Chicago team. Okay, let's uh, move on to the Pacific Division before yeah. we start doing our playoff predictions. Playoff Good previews. Good grief. Uh, let's start with our number eights in the Pacific Division. Yeah. Um, you know what? I want to let you go first on this one. Well, I, you know, the one constant that I found on every other list is the LA Kings. And I tried to you know, figure out a way to maybe get somebody else down there. And I just don't see anybody else being as bad as the Kings. The Kings didn't do very much in the off season. They didn't get faster. So I don't see much changing for the LA Kings. And I think it's probably a good thing. I think this team needs to toil for a minute. They need to be bad. They'll get some good players and, and they'll be back. Okay. I actually put the ducks at number eight for me. Okay. And I do think this is going to be a very close race for last place um but for me the yeah it's great to finally get rid of you know Corey perry's big contract and get that off your books but um you know center wise is where i'm, I'm really worried for this team i think gets laugh you know as long as he's healthy he's he's a fine number one center i think he's good enough for this team still even though he is aging a little bit slowing down um but you're all aging well, well yes of course every day thank you <laughs> <laughs> in terms of hockey years uh yeah Adam Henrique, I don't, I don't really know what to expect out of this guy. Is he going to be in, you know, a, a second or third line guy for this, this team? Is he going to put up fifty points? Uh, Jakob Silverberg, Andre Kasha, I'm hoping these guys still produce because they got a lot of the young guys coming up through the system, which I guess is like the one positive note I guess you can really look at because they got you know guys like Sam Steele and Max Jones coming up who could potentially make a difference and push them out of that last place spot. Um, and let's not forget to John Gibson. To me, he's still. In my opinion, a top ten goaltender. Yep, maybe yeah, top five. Top five. Yeah, and uh, I mean, look how bad this team was and how well he played. Yeah, and Ryan Miller's not a bad backup to have either. So he could save this team a lot of a lot of losses. Um, but you know, I think with with some of the older guys and you know, there's not a lot of exciting new young guys that I think are going to improve this team much on the front end. I think this team is in last place. Well, I'll say this: that a lot of players had down years last year, and the Ducks also had a lot of injuries. If guys can just have bounce back years and play at where we think they're capable of, I think this is it. I have them at seven, so it's not like I think they're going to do much better. And I have the Kings Uh, at seven. Okay, yeah. So we just have those two flipped around. But I I do think that the Ducks have more talent up front, and they also have have enough speed to where maybe they can make things happen. They, They have a few young guys, and they also have a defense that is very mobile. Yeah, they do have some good pieces. You know, like Cam Fowler, for example, I think he's still a very good quality top pairing defenseman. Um, as for LA, though, I, I think, yeah, outside of Drew Doughty and Alex Martinez, there's not a ton to be excited about on the back end for this team. However, I do think this goaltending is just as good as Anaheim's um, in terms of what I think you're going to get in terms of production. I just disagree. Well, I mean, Jonathan Quick. He's just not the same Jonathan Quick. No, but he, he had I had to change his whole style. But here's the thing, though. I think Jack Campbell, though, is a phenomenal goaltender, and he's going to take mean, over as the starters of this team in a couple years. As far as to say, a phenomenal. Well, okay. Would I say like Jack Campbell is capable? Yes, capable of goaltending a team from like last <laughs> place and instead finishing sixth in the division, maybe. But I mean, 
He took a crappy team and finished in 31 games with a 928 save percentage. That is true. How many games did he play last year? 31 games, 31, right? which is, I mean, a good that's, sample yeah. size when you still can finish so with those kind of well, that's and numbers. that's where you almost want your backup goalie to be between 50, 50 and 30. I think is a yeah. good split. And I think you're going to see you're going to see a 50 50 split in net with these guys. And I think as long as Quick's healthy and you know Jack keeps them fresh, I think these guys can still put up. Just as good as numbers as you're going to see Gibson and Miller put up, and that's what I mean by you okay. know in terms of comparables. But um, to me, I think it's it's the you know up front where I think maybe L.A. gets a slight nod because I think a lot of guys had down years in terms of like Alex I follow, you know Tyler Toffoli, Jeff Carter. These guys all had down seasons, and I think they they you know Jeff Carter while he doesn't really have anything to quote unquote prove, he's going to want to go out and be better this year. Yeah, I I, I mean these two teams are very similar. Yeah, like they're they're both aging. You know, they both have some some uh, very talented guys that have been really good for a long time, and and they are still securing the top lines, top defensive pairing. They both have really good goalies. They have a lot of unknowns throughout the rest of their organization. They don't have a lot of love coming. Like LA has some some nice pieces coming. Uh, I think they're still several years away. And to me, both these teams are just. I mean. The best thing for them is to not be great right now. Yeah, I mean, Anaheim. Does Anaheim look to move Ryan Getzlaff? Like, do we start hearing his Ooh. name? You know, if Anaheim comes out of the gate and they're they're last place and they have no shot at the playoffs in by like December, do they start to go, hey Ryan, like you know, maybe next year? What do you want to do? Because year. maybe he doesn't want to just spend a whole year toiling. I mean, this might be his. You know, next year he's thirty. He turns thirty five this year, and then he turns thirty six next year. Like. Does he want to spend his last two years of true, like being a first line guy? Right. Does he want to do that playing for a bad team? Because this, I don't see Anaheim all of a sudden next year being that great either. Maybe now's the time to just get out and get your pieces for him and and call it a day. Uh, I know he has a no move clause. You got to eat that money though too. Who eight million? But eight million be worth it for him. I mean, if you, even if even if Anaheim was yeah, but at thirty four, right. thirty five, I don't want to give somebody it's eight only, million dollars. But it's only two. It's only two years, and he's so good. That's he, the you pl- know he's going to get you seventy points. You're paying that money for a seventy point guy anyway. I'd rather take on one year than two, but that's just me. Yeah, but it's. I mean, if you want Ryan Getzlaff, and you are a team that could, you know, let's let's say Arizona, maybe Minnesota. Let's say Arizona goes. Well, hey, we could we could use Ryan Getzlaff. They could use a top line. They, center, they need a sure. center, and. And may, you know maybe they're willing to give up a first round pick for Ryan Getzlaff if he's willing. I mean, it's not that far from Anaheim. You can it's three four hour more. drive. Anywho, uh, yeah, okay. So you're number six. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. I have the Oilers at six as well. I yeah. wanted to put them higher. I just can't. Yeah, it's it's very tough when you look at all the dead weight they have on this team. Like they did get rid of a big piece of dead weight in Lucic. I think that James Neal will have a better year than he had last year. Which okay, funny little thing I read today that like somebody was joking that the reason Kachuk signed his contract was because he saw Lucic on the first line power play. I was like, no, nah, we can't, we can't let Calgary do this, <laughs> and so he signed the deal. Perfect. <laughs> There's probably some truth to that. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do like Mike Smith coming to the Oilers. I think I that really he do. can have a positive, positive, uh, you know, push the needle there. But ultimately, I just don't. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't. They they are wasting away Drysaitel and McDavid, and it's so sad to watch. And unless they can pull off some huge trade here, the only thing they can do is just be. I mean, they're not ever going to be the worst. They're not going to be the worst. So. Now they're going to be a middling team. They're going to get another, like maybe you number go, ten, like, eleven draft nine pick, through twelve draft pick, yeah. and maybe that player works out. Maybe he doesn't. And I mean, I think the conversation is going to quickly shift to: Does Connor McDavid want to be here? I think it's going to go quick. Yeah, I think if they don't come out of the gates and look competitive, that conversation is going to come up real quick. It's going to, yeah, it needs, it has to. And anybody that that's avoiding it is just you know you're you're avoiding it because you you just don't think it's possible that no. And then the problem is is once McDavid's gone, how long before you see Drysaitel start having that that conversation with management? Right, like, right. well, well shoot, Dreis- now there's no yeah, reason. Drysaitel, I think, maybe is a little different because of the fact of how much money he makes compared to. 
I mean, he had great production, but he well, had great production playing with McDavid. So Yeah, but you, you put him with a top-pairing center, right? And you can say, okay, he could probably go score 50 goals playing alongside Austin Matthews. You, right? wonder, or, you wonder Connor McDavid, though, if he could fetch you some team willing to give up like three first round draft picks. Oh, in a heartbeat. And a top six forward and like somebody would give up the world for him. Look at what br- they gave up for Carlson, in. right? And Carlson yep. isn't yep. really looked at as a game changer anymore. He's still well, look I don't know about that. But, I don't, well, but he's not the best player in the world. No, and he's definitely not, but I mean again, you're not worried about McDon- McDonald's, McDavid's health either like you are maybe with Carlson. You should much, be worried but, about your health if you're yeah. eating McDonald's. All well, <laughs> Let's just move on. Okay, so uh, you're number five. <sighs> Vancouver. Okay, you have Vancouver. Number yeah, I, I, this is another team that I wanted to put higher, but I think just given what they have on the back end and in goal, it just it became a little bit more difficult I for me. I actually don't hate their back end. I don't I, hate I, it, but I don't, at least not I don't as much as love it. Year. No, definitely not. Is you know I think Quentin Hughes is going to be phenomenal back there, but again, it's Quentin Hughes. You got Tyler Myers now back there. Jordy Ben is is an underrated fifth defenseman. Yes, he he's a great defensive defenseman. He he'll be solid, but you know Quentin Hughes, I think is the biggest question mark. You know what guy are we going to get? Are we going to get the superstar everybody thinks he's going to be, or are we going to get you know a, a pretty middle of the road defenseman? Which you know who knows. Um, you know, even if he does put up 30, 40 points, I still think it's a successful season for a guy like that. Um, but, you know, again, the big question mark for me is a net. You know, you know, Markstrom was 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 fine last year. He wasn't great. He wasn't bad. 918. Yeah. He didn't stink, but he wasn't he wasn't great. Above average. Yeah. But he was above average. You know, they've got luckily, you know, in goal, they've got a lot of good prospects. They've got Demko, who I think will probably end up being the backup this year. And then they've got DiPietro in the in the pipeline as well. So they've got a couple really good pieces who could, you know, in a couple seasons make this team, you know, and they could be something to be, you know, to be dealt with. But, um, yeah, I just I, – I, I'm not as high on, you know, the JT Miller ad – um, I think it'll be fine. I think he's a 45 point guy. I think Vancouver yeah, he has could a be. lot of 45 point guys. And that's the thing, yeah. And Louis Erickson, what are you going to get out of that guy? Um, who knows? Tanner Pearson, are you going to get, you know, what we thought he could be? Or are you going to get the guy that, you know, LA wanted to get rid of because, you know, he wasn't working yeah. out? Yeah. Michael Furland, another guy who, like, maybe he can play in your, like, on your second line, but definitely your third. Maybe he can right. put up 40 points. Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's quite a few question marks. Uh, I, I actually, I think that Markstrom answered a lot of questions last year. That like This team started to play some kind of system, and he played really well in it. I like that they're, like, I think most teams have gone to a system where they go, all right, we want to play our goalies like 45 to 50 games. And I think they'll do that. I think that Demko will get a good, good look. And if he's not ready, I think they'll probably go out and sign one of these free agent goaltenders maybe maybe they bring in a Neuverth who yeah who got released and I don't so, understand that either why well, he got hurt and I think it was just like well okay bye right well we that's, wanna, that's we're not gonna MO. pay you if we're not sure <laughs> so um but I I mean I this team does outside of Besser and Pedersen this team doesn't have a ton of star power but they have a lot of guys that I really like and I, I like Bo Horvat I think that he's a really good second line center and so next captain too he, rumor is he's next, rumor is yeah oh, they're gonna slap the thing on him so to. So I think that there are some some nice pieces here, and I think that actually the Calgary Flames will finish in fifth. I just don't like their goaltending, David really? Rich. I'm big question mark, and even if he can play well for a 30, 40 game stretch, what who's who's gonna who else is gonna play with him? Cam Cam Talbot, who has not been good in three years. I will give you that. I I'm not excited about their goaltending for Calgary. I do think yeah. I also think Calgary had a lot of guys have career years, and I'm wondering if that comes back down to earth. You know, does everybody just if Giordano's not a Norris Trophy candidate? If uh, you know, you, need, you almost need Johnny Goudreau scoring you 40 goals. Like, does uh, oh my gosh, who's their top line center? Right? Monahan, Sean Monahan. You know, <laughs> does he? Oh my gosh, my brain went by. Does uh. Does he have the same kind of year that he had last year? I mean, Elias Lindholm, he had a career year, came out of nowhere, 70-plus points. Like, Do these guys have that in them again, or was it just a year where everything kind of worked out? And uh, you know, two years ago, they had pretty similar defense, and it all went to hell pretty quick. When last year it all worked out, 
do we which defense is the real defense so i so i think there's a lot of questions with with calgary and i i don't love their depth uh, outside of their their top two lines so i i think they're they're as much of a question mark as vancouver it's just they happen to win the division last year so of course we you know naturally think that they're going to do better but i'm really concerned about their goaltending Okay. I, the goaltending argument, I, I can understand that one because for me, that that is a big concern. I do think Cal, Cam Talbot will be a little bit better than last year, but I still don't have a lot of faith in, yeah. in Riddick. What's that saying? Right. <laughs> for sure. Okay. So I have Calgary at five. I have Vancouver at four. Uh, I don't know if that means Vancouver makes the playoffs. No. I, I think it's a five and three. But so. that means that they're definitely in the conversation. Uh, I think they could. Okay. Um, that brings us so obviously my number same, four. Same top... Oh, you're number four. Yeah, now. we missed that one. No. So my number four is Arizona, oh, okay. who I think is going to be a team that um, could make the playoffs. I really like the addition of Phil Kessel. I love their goaltending. Their back end to me is one of the better top sixes in the league when healthy. Um, however, it's all dependent, I think, on Winnipeg if they make the playoffs or not. Does Winnipeg, with the you know the depletion of their defense, you know just Hollebuck play a decent Patrick game or Lainey's does not signed right. yet. Kyle Connor's not signed yet. Like, right. Do they go a month or two without those doing? guys? Come on. I don't understand it either. Especially Kyle Connor. I don't understand. Yeah. Well, he has a little bit more of an argument because he knows he's going to be a top line guy on that team. So he can be like, well, listen, you want me on that top line because right. it works so well. Pay him 7 million bucks. I know. That's what he's going to give get. him a Nylander contract. Exactly. That's what he is. Uh, yeah. But for me, Arizona coming in at number four, Z's, um, yeah, like I said, I the only question marks I have are down the middle for this team. Uh, Derek Stepan's going to be, you know, maybe your number one guy. Maybe Nick Smoltz is. Um, I think these yeah, are right now. Stepan has been playing with Clayton Keller, right, and Phil Kessel, but also uh, Hayton Barrett Hayton. Okay, Hayton, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he was their uh, their eighth overall, fifth, eighth overall pick last year. Yeah, and he's been playing up with the top line and playing well. Yeah. So, so there's a chance he makes the team and that's kind of a game changer. You know, if you could a guy be. who was taken in the yeah. taken high in the draft, that's that definitely is a game changer. Uh, the other big thing though for Arizona too, I love um I think Clayton Keller and Phil Kessel, I love that pairing. I think those two guys are gonna complement each other very well. I think you're actually gonna see maybe Phil Kessel end up being more of the passer in this situation because he is a guy who is You're drunk. <laughs> he's got great hands and he can still he does pass have it. Great hands. He does um hands. So, yeah, you might, if you're Clayton Keller, you might have to rip the puck a little bit more because, you know, power play, right? Everybody's going to be looking at Phil Kessel because this team had a dismal power play and everybody's going to say, okay, let's just cover Phil Kessel just like people do with Ovechkin, right? So I think that opens up for a guy like Clayton Keller to really capitalize yeah, I mean, a little Clayton more. Clayton Keller can't be worse, right? No. So he's going to have a better year. Phil Kessel is going to be Phil Kessel. And I, I mean, the, the, that third line. Uh, Michael Grabner played with Brad Richardson like as a pair. They were just a shutdown pair all last year, and they did phenomenal. I mean, this team lost was like 382 man games. To right, injury. they were number one. And in we're the NHL. talking like top defensemen were out, top centers, like they're everyone started was goal, They're starting goalie. Goal center. Yeah, yeah. Rotno was out. For and, and, and I mean, the fact that Kemper comes in and plays just as well uh, to me, it's it's not necessarily speaking to Kemp, Kemper, although. You know, I'm not going to take it away from them. The team structure is definitely built around the defense as opposed to the forwards. So, uh, but they they started showing a lot of speed, especially towards the end of the year. This team's forecheck was phenomenal. Like they gave you no time. They dumped the puck in. Two guys were on the puck carrier, and they they were just creating a lot of problems. And so, I think when you think of this team now, the way that they played in the second half of the year. I think that with a healthy rant, healthy Ratna. Ante, I'm just yeah. gonna say anti, anti, okay. Uh, and the additions of like Carl Soderberg that can't be discounted. I mean, he provides a third line center, or he can go move up into the wing. There's a lot of options with him, and with the addition of Phil Kessel, like I think this team is going to be the surprise team in the National Hockey League. So I have the Arizona Coyotes finishing second in the wow. Pacific Division. Wow, second, second in the Pacific. Whoo. They are going to be the team that comes out of nowhere, surprises everybody. Uh, so, so my or I, I have the Canucks at four. I have the Sharks at three, the Coyotes at two, and then the Golden Knights, who I think are going to be 
they're, they're going to be much better than they were last year. They were pretty decent last year, but I think they're going to come out of the gate real quick. They're going to build a substantial lead in this division. And uh, I think they're going to be, it's going to be the Golden Knights and everyone else. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I have the Golden Knights winning this division. Uh, at number two, I do have San Jose. Um, even though they did lose a lot of goal scoring, they basically lost the top line when you think about Pavelski. Um, right. You know, what's his face and uh, Nyquist leaving. Uh, God, why can't I remember his name? That just split off and went to Colorado. But anyways, um, yeah, so they lose a little bit, but I do think, you know, they're structured in such a way. I think a full year of Eric Carlson will give them some stability. I think now Logan Couture being the leader of that team, he, he'll step up. I think Thornton will step up. Um, you know, and I, I don't think Jones can have any worse of a season than he did last year. Uh, I think 898 or something like that. So I think that gets a little bit better in this back end is still this well, still has I, a I great top they, three. What they'll do is they have to rein in their back end a little bit like that back end can't just be giving up the opportunities that they gave up last no. year. I mean, they this is as, a team that finished third in goals for per game, and I don't right. see that happening again. I think they will be a little bit more structured defensively if they're going to be decent. Well, yeah. and see, I don't know if they're going to be capable of that. OK, I don't know. I don't know if they have the speed. I yeah, I just wonder about this team. I, I think that they they've kind of entered into the the place that to me I look at this and I go, well, you guys probably have like this is probably it right here, you know. And then you're gonna have like they're gonna start looking like the Ducks and the Kings real quick. I mean, yes, they have you Timo could. Meyer, Thomas Hurdle, and Evander Kane's pretty uh, still a pretty good player. Logan Couture, but I mean, even Logan Couture, he's on the other side of thirty now. You know, at what point does he start to to maybe start to dip slightly? And Joe Thornton, he's not getting any faster. I mean, there's there are some question marks about this team. As good as their defense is, when we look at their defense, I think we're thinking about what they've done. I don't know what they're going to do. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Everyone on their defense is 30. Like Eric Carlson's 29. Burns is 34. Vlasic 32. Like their best players are, have, are probably not going to have Pass their prime. better years. Sure. Like they might have as good years. That's possible. But do all three of them have live up to their expectations. I mean, granted Vlasic, he's not putting up big points anyways, but between right. Burns and Carlson, can both of them put up monster years? Which is maybe what you need if San Jose is going to finish higher up in, in this division. So. Yeah, and for me, the reason they do come in at number two is because I think Calgary, they're, like you said, they're top players I don't think are going to produce, you know, these career years again. I think, you know, Goudreau, for example, 99 points. I think he's more along the line of an 82, 85-point player. So he regresses a little bit. I think the goaltending is where it hurts them the most because now Riddich, if he fails, which I, I right. don't think he's going to be that their number one guy, they don't have anybody like a Mike Smith to go to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and so obviously for me at number one, I think they come miles ahead of everybody else in this division, Vegas. The biggest reason why? Stone all year long. They You're have, a big Mark Stone guy. Oh, I love Mark Stone. Yeah, I, I think, think he's Mark one of the Stone's best players in the NHL. A lot of love right here. Like he will a lot of love. Yeah, and, a full and, season of Pacioretty, Stasny, and Stone. Paul Stasny's going to be oh. better. Pacioretty's got to be better. I I think that you'll you'll see this team is is going to be much more like maybe year one than they were year two. I think. Yep. I think the the, the only the only concern is their defense. Not not they necessarily lost, for me. I think Colin Miller. You know, I they didn't really do a whole lot to to enhance their back end. No, but I think it I think it's good enough. For me the bigger concern though and the bigger concern is Mark Andre Fleury's backup, right? Because I think he is getting he's getting up there in age, right? He he'll be turning 35 this year. Mark Malcolm Subban is terrible, right? I I do not think he is and even I think at best he's a number 3 number 4 goaltender in a system. Um and so I think the biggest thing for this team to look for this year especially because again you talked about it with Boston with teams wanting to look to maybe go you know 50 35 games right. with with goaltenders um you know they need a guy who can relieve a little bit of pressure for you know flurry and give him some time off to rest which they need a healthy flurry in the playoffs they need a, a well rested flurry and yes. so um you know maybe finding a backup again they they might like you said go out and get a Neuwirth or somebody yeah, in the season there. so uh one other one other little wild card might be Cody Glass if he can make the team oh my gosh. and come in yeah. and be their third line center behind Stastny and uh, and Carlson. That's yeah. a pretty good third line center. I'll tell you what would be an amazing pickup if you're Vegas. Maybe you go out and pluck yourself a Jimmy Howard at the trade deadline. Detroit won't be doing well. They'll be looking to you know say, hey yeah, Jimmy, I, 
you want to get us a second round I pick? See, and I just feel like Jimmy Howard's just, he's going to be the guy. He's, I don't want to move. They don't trade him. He stays there. He'll keep signing one year. I understand that too. I don't too. want him yeah. anymore. I feel like that may might be what happens with him. Well, that is our Atlantic and Pacific Division rankings. Let us know what you thought at OT Hockey Talk on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, yeah, let us know if your rankings are different. Let us know if you think I'm insane for having Arizona at two. Because I feel a little crazy having Arizona I at do. two. But I, I just there has to be something in there where it's different. Like it's usually not the same every year. P- teams that made the playoffs last year missed the next year. So somebody's got to somebody's got to miss. Who's and, this year's New York Islanders, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. They're they're always as like the the New Jersey Devils. They were a team that two years ago everyone thought they'd be last in the league, and what do you know? They were leading the division for half the year. I would rather take my chances and try to pick that team than you know pull the USA Today and just do a backwards <laughs> of or the same exact ending standings of last year. So. Uh, That is our show. We hope that you have a great rest of your week and uh, enjoy the rest of the preseason because the regular season is upon us. October 2nd. Talk to you guys soon.